Hello, everyone, and welcome to Kilowatt. My name is Bodhi, and I am your host. A couple quick announcements here. This episode's being recorded on November 16th, 2022, because this is when I have time to record it. On next Tuesday's episode, we will be going over the Lucid Motors earnings call. And Lucid Motors also had an event this week showing off their Lucid Air Pure, uh, their Touring, and their SUV, the Lucid Gravity. We'll be discussing that all next week. And finally, if you're interested, Elon was interviewed at the 2022 G20 Summit. I'll put a link in the show notes. I watched it. Um, I didn't think anything was, you know, so mind-blowing that I needed to include it in the show. But I will mention it, and I'll put a link in the show notes if you want to watch it. Let's jump into our EV news. We've talked about Redwood Materials several times on this show, but if you don't know, Redwood Materials recycles batteries with the hope of reclaiming their rare earth metals and the other materials used to make batteries, and then recycling them and then reselling that back to battery manufacturers. Think of it as mining the battery packs instead of mining the earth. Redwood Materials announced this week that they would start selling cathode active materials and copper foil for lithium ion batteries to Panasonic. And Panasonic will use those materials to build battery cells in their new $4 billion factory uh, that just happens to be in Kansas. Production starts in 2025, so they have a little bit to to gather the materials and store them up. In the meantime, Panasonic will use some of that recycled copper foil at their Sparks Nevada plant that they share with Tesla, and that will begin in 2024. General Motors CEO Mary Barra believes that GM will start seeing a profit from their electric vehicles by 2025, and the company will go fully electric by 2035. And I don't have anything to add to that, so I will move on. Canoe may soon have a factory to build their EVs. They're currently in an agreement to buy a vehicle manufacturing facility that already exists in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. The facility is conveniently located next to rail access and road access, which is important when you're getting raw materials in and out and, and with any luck, shipping cars out. The property spans 120 acres, Initially, it'll employ about 500 people, and Canoe thinks that they can build 20,000 units by the end of 2023, which honestly sounds optimistic to me. Speaking of optimism, Euro NCAP safety tested the Hyundai Ioniq 6 and gave it a five-star rating after conducting their crash test. The Ionic 6 actually beat out all the other EVs built on the eGMP platform, which is Hyundai and Kia's electric vehicle platform. Right now, the Hyundai Ionic 5, the Kia EV6, the Genesis GV60 are currently sitting on the eGMP platform. So congratulations to the Hyundai team, the Ionic 6 team. That's awesome. Ford CEO Jim Farley gave some neat little tidbits as it pertains to EVs. Farley thinks that Ford needs to build their own EV components in-house, things like batteries and motors and that kind of thing. He also said that labor costs on EVs are 40% less than their ICE counterparts. So that's pretty impressive. Now, the article that I was reading mentioned is there going to be layoffs be because of this because Ford has already laid off 3,000 employees. And the answer to that is, I, I don't think so. Over time, they're just going to shift these people to build things like the motors and the batteries, if I had to guess. But now that I'm thinking about that, that might require some people to have to relocate and maybe they don't want to, so they would lose their job anyway. But I genuinely hope that the people that might be affected by this are able to find you know, work within the company somewhere else that doesn't require them to be laid off. I don't want anybody to get laid off. That's what I'm saying. All right, that's it for our EV news. Let's go ahead and jump into our Tesla news. Tesla is holding an event on December 1st for semi-truck deliveries. You have no idea how many times I had to say that to get it right. And I'm not even sure I did it that time, but it's close enough. Is this something that interests you? Is this something you'd like me to cover on the show? I mean, I probably will on some level, but I, I don't exactly know at what how much detail I, or effort I need to put into this. 
So I'm asking you, the listener, how much of this do you want me to cover? A little bit of it, a lot of it, none of it. Just email me. It's Bodie, B-O-D-I-E at 918digital.com, and we'll go with whatever the consensus says. Oh, by the way, if you're a shareholder, you can also attend this event, and I'll put a link in the show notes to the Twitter post that shows you how to sign up if you're a shareholder. All right, I've got... Uh, two stories here that are kind of a bummer. So just kind of stay with me as we report on them. Tesla has reported two new fatalities that occurred while the vehicle was in autopilot or full self-driving beta mode. They've reported this to the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration. We actually have very little information in regards to the accident. So I'm going to keep you posted as we learn more. Uh, the other bummer story here is a Model Y in China was filmed accelerating out of control and eventually crashing. The incident injured three people and unfortunately killed two people. This event was caught on video, and I'll put a link to the video in the show notes if you're interested. But you need to be aware that you're going to see some people getting hurt and possibly killed. So just be aware of that. In the video, you can see the driver trying to avoid hitting people like vehicles and pedestrians. A family member of the driver claims that the car was accelerating on its own and the driver tried several times to use the brakes and they were unresponsive. The driver also tried to put the vehicle in park and failed. According to Tesla China, the data pulled from the Model Y showed that the accelerator was deeply depressed, or depressed deeply is how they put it, for an extended period of time. And at one point, the accelerator was all the way down, and the driver did not press the brakes during the incident. In the video, you, I looked at it a couple times. I couldn't see the brake lights come on. That's not to say that the brake lights didn't come on. It's just that the videos that I saw, it didn't show the brake lights come on. Tesla China did say that the driver pressed the park button on the stock four times, and Tesla did say that the brake lights turned on and off quickly. They didn't say how many times, but they, they did say that that happened. Anecdotally, some Tesla owners have done tests uh, in the past to see if you could stop the car by pressing the park button on the stock. And it turns out you can, but you have to hold it down. Now, the next time I have an opportunity to get into Sierra's Tesla, I am definitely going to test this. And I'm, I'm going to ask you, if you have a Tesla out there, please test this and let me know if it actually works. You have to hold it down for quite some time, from what I understand. Local law enforcement has ruled out uh, that the driver was under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Local police are looking for a third-party agency to investigate the remains of the Model Y. And normally they would look for like the black box. It's also called a event data recorder. I've actually been involved in helping PD uh, or some sort of investigator get access to the car's black box. And that usually requires us to do a little bit of extrication and peeling back. And they always want us to be very careful because that, um, that event data recorder, according to the people that I've talked to, is very sensitive and if we hit that thing too hard they may lose the data now that seems very strange it seems like it should be like bulletproof and i don't know how true this is um but that's just what i've been told when we've been called out to do this kind of a task all right i have one more story because i didn't want to end on bad news tesla has started rolling out FSD beta version 11. Now this is a slow rollout. So if you don't have it yet, that's okay. It'll take a few weeks. What's new? Tesla has replaced the legacy highway stack with a new highway stack that unifies the vision and planning stack for use on and off highways. And from what I understand, this new software is able to take in and process more information at one time than the, than the old software. I realize some of you might not be familiar with what a software stack is, but and I'm not a programmer, so I'm going to do my best to explain this without sounding stupid. But basically, there are a lot of different programs that go into full self-driving, for example. You have the stuff that's running on the server. We'll just break it down into three parts to make it easy. You have the stuff that's running on Tesla's server. You have the stuff that's running on the car. And then the, you have the UI interface that you as a driver sees. All three of those pieces are like components that work together 
into one software application. And you, it's similar for a hardware stack or a, a solution stack. They, they, there's all sorts of different stack terms, but that's, that's basically what it is. It's, it's a bunch of components that are coming together to work in one application in terms of software. All right, now that I've poorly explained a topic that I am grossly unqualified to explain to you, there have also been some improvements in the occupancy network. Tesla's occupancy network determines if any, if in any location in 3D space around the car, whether it's drivable or not drivable. So there's been improvements there. For those of you on FSD beta, when you get version 11, would you do me a favor and just kind of summarize your thoughts of version 11 and email them to me so I can read them on the show? Normally I don't read emails on the show, but because I can kind of figure that's a communication between me and you. But in this instance, I'm, I'm telling you in, up ahead of time, uh, if once you get version 11, send me an email and tell me what you think of it and what's better, what's worse. I'm, I'm curious to know. I'd like to collect all that and, and report back to the listeners what everybody's experiences are. All right, everybody, that is it for the show this week. Pretty short one. If you want to email me, it's Bodie, B-O-D-I-E, at 918digital.com. You can find me on Twitter at 918digital. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Next week is Thanksgiving, so... We'll have Lucid's earnings call on Tuesday, and I haven't quite decided what we're going to do on Friday because it's technically a holiday here in the United States. So you'll either get some brief news or you'll get Rivian's earnings call. I haven't haven't quite decided what I'm going to do yet. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to the show. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will talk to you next Friday. Not next Friday. I will talk to you on Tuesday. So dumb. So dumb.